Good morning. Today you're joining me on the prolific Auburn's Lakes. Now I'm back on the big lake today. Now that has been flooded and frozen for the last four or five weeks. So not many people have been out to fish it. It's only reopened a week ago and the water levels are back down. So I'm hoping I'm going to catch a lot of fish today. It's been a southwesterly or southerly wind for the last two weeks and really mild temperatures. They're estimating 14 degrees today. So I'm going to fish a window and a cage feeder at 60 meters and the method feeder beyond that. So hopefully I'm going to catch some carp and some bream. So I'm just going to get set up and I'll speak to you shortly. And the first thing I need to do before I start fishing is prepare my pellets. So what I call is I like to put a little bit of flavour in. That's a pina colada bait booster. I'm going to put that into my water. Small helping of that, just to give it a little bit of flavour. Just give it a quick swish round. And what I'm going to use my pellet wetter. We're going to use two types of pellets today. I'm going to use the Thin Perfect pellets. Put a few in there. And I'm also using Pro Feed Pellets 2 mil. And the reason I've put two types of pellets in is because they're actually a slightly different colour. One's slightly darker than the other. And then in the other EVA bowl, I'm just going to put some pellets in there, some Pro Feeds, just a few. I'm going to add some orange lava rocks. Now that's because when I add the water, so then pellets to soak them, it's going to turn the water orange, which will in turn turn the pellets orange. So I'm just going to have a little bit of water there. So that's turned the water orange already. Now that colour will sink into the pellets and give them a different colour. So just give that a little switch. I'm going to leave them for probably, you can see, my fingers are orange. So now I'm just going to zip up my pellet wetter drop that in there for about a minute so that's it so in a minute's time we're going to take them out of there then pellets should have soaked in that color within an hour so by the time I've set up they should both be ready to go that's it they've been in there about 60 seconds now so I'm just going to give them out of there give them a little shake now I'm not going to throw that water so I'm going to use that water to mix my ground bait. I'm just going to get them out of there. Now, now these pellets have only been in with these lava rocks for about a minute and you can see the colour. So in about an hour's time, then pellets be orange. There's a lovely little tip for you. So now I'm going to mix my ground bait and this ground bait knows there's no introductory at all. 50-50 method and paste green. As I say, don't leave home without it. My favorite fish meal ground bait ever. So I'm just gonna mix up half a bag of that. Open. Because I'll be using this on me cage feeder line. Now the water I made I used for doing my pellets earlier, they're still in there for the flavouring. I'm just going to pour some of that in. Give that a whisk round. Now that's all wet and soggy in there. In 20 minutes time, that'd be perfect. And I'll stick it through the riddle and that'd be right for me to go fishing with. Now I'm going to be fishing for bream today on that cage feeder line and you never ever come fishing for bream without worms. Now the pellet wetters, though they're designed for pellets, they're absolutely fantastic for washing your worms off. So get yourself a great big ball of worms, stick them in your pellet wetter, zip that up, you can wash that out in the water. Show you that now. Look at that. 
perfect. And just put them in your EVA tub. There we go. And they're perfect for chopping up now. Now I'm almost ready to start. I've put my rod on my measuring sticks and measured at 60 metres. But what I'm going to do before I start fishing is I'm going to put a gripper lead on. I'm just going to chuck that lead out at 60 metres and check what the bottom's like. Because what I'm looking for, I'm fishing for bream on this line, so I don't really want to be fishing on top of a gravel bar. I want to be fishing on something smooth, a little bit silty, a little bit clayy. So I'm just going to chuck this gripper lead out first of all and see what the bottom's like. And just pull it back gently and if you find a gravel bar, that's usually where the calf have been feeding and they've cleared the bottom so it's gravelly. But a smooth area is where the bream prefer to feed. So I'm just going to chuck this out now and see what the bottom's like. Now those micros that I soaked in the lava rocks earlier have been in there for about an hour now and as you can see they've gone proper orange. So what I'm going to do now is just take a handful, let the water drip out and put them in with my other pellets. And what that's done, now I'll just show you these other pellets. You can see how great them bright orange micros are. Now I've added them bright orange pellets to my other pellets, you can see the three different colours there. So we've got the orange pellets that I dyed, the Pro Free pellets and the Fin Perfect pellets. Three different colours around my method feeder. So I'm almost ready to go now, so I'm just going to quickly run you through what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do at the start is I'm going to feed 10 big feederfuls on that bream cage line. I've got a 60 gram large bullet feeder. Now I want a large feeder at first, so I'm going to give it 10 of them. And it needs to be heavy because you need to make sure you hit your clip every time you cast so you keep it accurately. And in my ground bait, I'm going to add some chopped worms and I'm also going to add some of these, the Flora Rocks. Now, Bream absolutely love these, so just give that a generous sprinkling of them. Pink, yellow and orange Fluoro Rocks. I've just mixed that in my ground bait, and you can see, hopefully, that's going to stand out on the bottom. Well, it's worked for me every time I've used them so far, so hopefully we'll get a few on that. Uh, I'm going to add a few of the orange pellets that we dyed. Some of the normal pellets, just a few, not many. Keep the fish grubbing. And some chopped worms, beautiful, look at them. just fed that cage line now with 10 feederfuls with worms and ground bait and a few micros. I'm going to leave that 
for probably an hour, hour and a half. And, but now I'm going to fish the method. The last clip top at 66 meters, six meters past my initial feed. And I've done that because I quite often think that in this really colored water that we got today, the fish will come to that noise. And I've already seen some carp topping to my right just by this point of these bushes. So I am going to put a bit of feed in down there, but I'm going to start on the method at 66 meters, just past that feed. Because I think, as I said, when that feed goes in, the fish come to noise and they'll just back off a little bit as I keep feeding it to get a better bait down. So I'm going to chuck the method just past it and see if we catch. Now I'm starting on just pellets around the feeder. It is a 60 gram distance feeder. And the reason I've chose 60 gram is because it's a very strong side wind. Now I could put 40 gram on easily in different conditions, but I need to make sure I hit that clip every time. And that's very important. And what I'm starting with is an eight mil fluoro wafter. Simple as that. Let's see if we can get a few bites. Now I've just cast that method feeder out. I'm gonna start with five minute casts and see if we can get a bite. I'm now going to put hook length on my cage feeder rig. So I'm going to choose straight off the revolution spool, size 12 and 30, a metre long. Well, it's been a bit of a crazy day so far, to be honest. Uh, I started on the method feeder, and I've religiously chucked that every five minutes at 66 metres. Um, no, I had an odd liner, but nothing, nothing major. So after an hour, I've come back on the cage. After seven minutes, it's ripped round, bent my hook out on the bite, probably foul looked. But since then, I've caught uh, five carp, all on the cage, uh, with a worm hook bait tipped with a red maggot. And the bite's been coming between seven and eight and a half minutes. Um, yeah, a bit of a strange day, really. So what I've actually done now is I've jumped back up the bank and I've re-wrapped my method rod to 60 meters which my cage is at so I'm going to give it a couple more goes on the cage I have to keep looking over my shoulder in case I get a bite early but I haven't had a bite early yet but because I'm fishing braid on that cage I expect to catch some bream but I haven't caught any bream yet which is strange there are normally some great big shoals of big bream along here but it's been all carp so far so I think in the next chuck I'm going to uh, chuck out my method and see if I can get one on that but We'll see, but yeah, it's been a good day so far. It's nice and mild, I've got to say. Hmm. But they said they weren't going to rain today, but we've had a few spots of rain, so I put my little bait brolly up. But it's, um, yeah, fingers crossed we'll catch some bream, but I'm just going to crack on now. Yeah, my rod's still there, <laughs> um, and I'll speak to you shortly. Oh, we're in. Oh, long time, 13 minutes that time. I want to say it, this actually feels like a bream. It hasn't woke up yet, so I presume it's a bream. But the bream do go up to nine pound in here, so. It is coming at me quite easily. I'm wondering whether, it, when I get it under my feet, it might just suddenly go mad. Oh, now it's flying a little bit harder. I'm going to stick my neck out and say that's a bream. What do I know, eh? <laughs> Probably the smallest carp in this big lake. About five pounds. Beautiful looking fish though, wow! Almost a fully scaled mirror. 
Ooh, just in the lip too. Beautiful, look at that. Let's get out of the way. Cracking fish. Now let's have a talk about what I'm using today. Now I'm using the 13-2 distance master rods in the 100 gram version. I've paired them up with the new intensities, 720s. Now, being involved with press innovations, I've had lots of people ask me about the new intensities. What are they like? Now, all I can say is, they come with the same power drive system as the Sentries, which means they are extra smooth and extremely powerful. I've probably used them seven or eight times so far, and I really, really like them, I've got to say. When you really notice is when you're playing fish, they're ever so smooth, ever so powerful, just like the smaller Centris, but I really like the quick drag system on them. When I wanna set my tip, and I'm fishing the method feeder, if I wanna just have it so that if the bite's really aggressive, I can just give it a slight turn on the spool at the top, and, and it makes it extremely loose especially where you want to set your tip. So rather than having to move your handle, just undo the top of the spool a little bit, and just pull a little bit of line off to set your tip to where you want your tip. So for me, absolutely love them. Paired up with the Distance Masters, they are designed to go a long, long way. I mean, I've only chucked 80 to 90 meters in mine so far. By knowing test, some of the guys at Preston have actually chucked a long, long way with them, 120 meters. So yeah, that's what I'm using today, 13.2 distance masters and 7.20 intensities. Now I'm using two 13.2 distance masters today. One is set up with braid, which I've used for the cage feeder. And on that setup, I've got nine meters of 026 reefo power and a simple helicopter rig on that, on that rod. I've used a 50 gram hex mesh feeder with chop worms and ground bait etc through the feeder and I've used a meter long straight off the revolution store N30 size 12 to 015 reflow power. Keep that tip down when you're playing the fish until they're under your rod tips, and you can pick the rod up. Under your rod tip. It's definitely a carp. Come to Westy, come on girl. There we go, head up. Oh, you don't want to come in, do you? 
I would say he's 10 pounds. What a cracker. So there you go guys, my biggest two fish of the day. Caught at 60 meters on a cage feeder on the big lake at Auburn's Lakes, Willows Lake. Well, I've had another fantastic day on the big lake at Auburn's Lakes. A very strange day too. I've come trying to catch Bream with a cage feeder and carp beyond that on the method feeder. I've only managed to catch one carp on the method feeder beyond that. This color and this wind normally is Bream soup. But all I've managed to catch on the cage feeder has been carp. I've had 11 carp today, but probably they're big fish. I would say probably 100, 110 pound, they're big fish. But it's been a very strange day. I've caught the carp on bream tactics. Couldn't catch on the method, or caught on the cage with a long tail. But that's fishing for us guys. We never really know what's gonna happen when we sit down and fish. With the mild temperatures and everything we've had for the last couple of weeks, I thought the bream would be pulling me tip round all day long. But there you go. That's why it's called fishing and not catching. So take care, stay safe, and I'll see you on the bank sometime. Bye for now. What a stunning, stunning fish. Beautiful.